across from that. But uh, Leo Price, I've known him now for over 30 years, and he's, what you see is what you get. He's like the Lord. He never changes. <laughs> and that's the truth. I, I don't know anyone in the kingdom that I consider more stable, stronger. I've never heard a complaint from him about anybody. All I've ever seen was encouragement and the depth of God's word in his heart. He is absolutely a great man of God. And um, the ministry that they have, I know, is in the process of evolving. I think that the things that are in front of them are going to be greater than the things that were behind them. And we are so honored today to have a, a friend, a genuine friend to our church. And I'm just going to ask Leo first to come. And would you give him a hand of appreciation this morning as he comes? My microphone is... Which microphone do you want him to use? Mine? Yeah. Stay right here. You can be seated. Say something nice. I'll say something nice, yes, sir. I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> <laughs> Stay here. Ralph Waldo Emerson, who was one of the greatest poets that ever lived, made this statement. He said, what lies before us and what lies behind us is only minor compared to what lies within us. There is within us a spirit that if we give it to Christ, he changes everything. And what's inside can come on the outside and change your life forever. We're blessed to be here, honored to be here. Get ready. If nobody else shouts, I'll be the one running the aisles. But we're going to have a time in Jesus. Can you say amen? You want to, you want to bring Paula up? Say to yeah, well, Paula, come on up here. This is my lovely wife, Paula. Give her a good hand of appreciation. Thank you, Tim. Tim, you and Connie, come on up. Um, and I'll let Paula in, introduce them more because they have been such a blessing and a friendship to our lives. We're honored to have them here. And what you're about to hear and what you're about to uh, uh, listen to is going to change you from the inside out. And so will you give my lovely wife, Paula, a great big hand of appreciation as she comes. spending eternity at this time in my life. But God, I am, um, I always say I didn't, I, I, I didn't come to try to make you believe in a miracle. I came to tell you my story. You can decide. I want you to know every song we sing today, and I cannot, church, I cannot emphasize this enough, that every single word you hear today, unless we go into some worship song that you already know, but every single word you hear today, lyric you hear was written in the months and the weeks preceding my diagnosis. Two weeks before my diagnosis, we would do the initial recording of this music. I don't write music typically for me to sing. I know when I come to this church, I sing music that I write, but a lot of the music I write is keyed, it's, it, every, it's for other people to sing, not te technically not for me, but I cannot explain and emphasize enough that when you hear it, please keep in mind that the music was written 
the, this was the last music that was written before, right before my diagnosis. And um, it's, it's inseparable to my testimony in, in, in my mind. And I've asked uh, Tim and Connie, um, Tim Toller, some of you will know, and Connie, his lovely wife from uh, near Raleigh, North Carolina, will you give them a hand for me? And um, I've asked them to come and help me. You all know I'm from Kentucky. And so I decided to write a song again before my diagnosis. Going back to the roots of where I live. Dear battle, my God fights to win. Dear raging storm, you are destined for an end. Dear valley, soon you'll rise to higher ground. Dear mountain, oh my dear mountain, you're coming down. Dear battle, my God fights to win. Dear raging storm, you are destined for an end. Dear At the name of Jesus, there's a victory sound. Fully dressed in God's armor, I stand firmly on the ground. Got my testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Dear mountain, you're coming down. the name of Jesus, there's a victory sound. Fully dressed in God's armor, I stand firmly on the ground. Got my testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Dear mountain, you're coming down. Jesus, Lord over creation, there is Nothing so great that my God cannot do. Oh. At the name of Jesus, there's a victory sound. Fully dressed in God's armor, I stand firmly on the ground. Got my testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Dear mountain, you're coming down, down, down. At the name of Jesus, there's a victory sound. Fully dressed in God's armor, I stand firmly on the ground. Got my testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Dear mountain, you're coming down. Mountain, you're coming down.
You know, if you don't know Jesus today, I don't want you to leave here today with the impression that he is God because he can work a miracle. He is not God because he can work a miracle. Rather, he can work a miracle because he's God. Now, why is that important? Oh, it's imperative that you understand. Because you see, if you believe that he is God because he can work a miracle, then what happens to your belief system when he doesn't? What happens to your belief system when he doesn't do it like you want him to do? What happens to your belief system when you are stuck in the waiting room? Or when you are suffering. At some point in our lives, you'll find yourself in need for something more than your husband can give you or than your wife can give you or than your mom or your sister or your children can give you. At some point in your life, you're going to need something more. If I could borrow the words of Elizabeth Elliot, she said this. She said, and if you know her, she was a missionary to um, the Amazon. Her husband and four colleagues were killed by the very people they were ministering to. And when they were killed, when her husband was killed, she stayed and ministered to the very people that had killed her husband. And she said this, a woman who was not alien to a lot of suffering and disappointment in her life, and this is what she said. She said, I'm convinced there's a good many things in this life that we can't do anything about, but that God wants to do something with and you might wonder why you're here today. And all I can tell you is what I truly believe is that God wants to do something with that thing in you that you can't do anything about. That's what God wants today. I always thought I lived a pretty serious life. Until one day my life got serious. October 5th, 2022, two weeks after a worship conference, the, the, our big worship conference for the year, I would find myself in a doctor's office and the word cancer would be introduced to me without any warning. Leo and I were just running around that day because we were getting ready to take a trip, um, a ministry trip the very next day. We were leaving. Normal appointment. Had no clue what was coming down the pike that day. There was no pathology report that day. There was no biopsy that day. That's how certain the doctor was. And I couldn't believe it. And I remember m my knees just buckling underneath me and I threw my arms out just hoping somebody would get me before I fell. And all I could do was try to speak and I couldn't speak. I finally pointed to the door. And I finally got out the word, husband. Husband. They didn't know Leo was in the waiting room. Go get my husband. Leo came. And they explained, listen. 
it's going to be okay. I know it's, it's, it's not what you wanted to hear, but actually, Paula, we see this. We see this a lot. There's one type that's pretty common, so don't worry about it. You'll probably have some radiation and you'll go along with life. Don't worry about it. We'll know for sure Monday, but don't worry about it. It's probably this common one, no problem. Now, in full disclosure, there is a very rare form that's much harder to treat, but we never see that, so don't worry about that. Well, a few days later, we find out it was, in fact, the rare form of cancer. And I said, doctor, what did I do? Did I do anything to cause this? And he said, you were just unlucky. You were just unlucky. Without warning, how would I survive? A storm that should have ended me, but here I am alive. My foundation was not shaken, so I just think I should stand right here. think I failed to notice the times you chose to come when I could not see your goodness but still you brought me comfort to flee from you I'd be a fool so I just think I should stand right here Stand right here. Like a tree planted by the water, my heart will never be moved. Jesus will not fear. times I failed had grief so great a sum and to count the times you failed me would not equal even one but yet your love has stood by me so I just think I should stand right here I'll stand right
shall not be moved like a tree planted by the water. I'll stand right here and worship you. Oh, yes, God. Oh, I, I shall not be moved. Oh, I, I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water. Stand right here and worship you. Stand right here and worship you. Oh, I stand right here and worship Not me. Not me. After all, it's me. I wonder what I even thought. If you would ask me, Paula, could you ever get cancer? I would say yes, anyone can, right? But I wonder after that, did I think I couldn't? Did I think I was too good? I didn't think I thought that. But I just had to wonder later, did I? I got home, had a thousand questions in my mind. I I felt stigmatized. I felt ugly. Felt like I was in a body that I so desperately wanted to escape. I kid you not. Your mind is so overwhelmed. Mine was so overwhelmed that I would walk through the house and I would try to figure out, is there a way? that I can be who I am and not be in this body because I don't want to be in this body anymore. I felt guilty. I remember my, my mother and my sister coming right away. I never thought about what I would say to them. But when I saw them, the first thing I said was, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure I even completely understand that yet. But I remember the day we got the really bad news. We walked in the house and I told Leo, lock the door. Lock the door. Those were my words to him. I don't want anybody in this house other than my family. You see, I knew I needed to be alone with God. It wasn't that I wanted to keep people out. It was just that I knew I needed to be alone with God. I knew enough to know that the battle would be in my mind. I have this creative room in the back of the house and there's a big whiteboard there. It's probably four feet long by at least that high. And, and I had all of the notes on it from the worship conference and everywhere. Everything white was dark, you know, because there was notes on it everywhere. And I just began to erase it as if it's nothing. I erased that board because I knew 
what I needed to see was the word of God. And I began to write on the board, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I've set before you life and death and blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Choose life so that you, and you know what that scripture says, and your seed, so that you and your seed shall live. And I put my seed. I wrote it right on the board. That's John and Jordan, my kids. I'm not just fighting for me now. I'm fighting for you too. There's not failed one word of his good promises. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to, his own under, un, to your own understanding. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Therefore, with joy will I draw waters from the well of salvation. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I remember one of the many times I went to the emergency room. I had gone in because... They had nicked my lung or something had happened and my lung had collapsed. I was very thin at that point. My lung had collapsed when they put the port in. And there I'm laying in the ER room, the big granddaddy room, because I had all the machines, so it was the big, big room. And I was laying on the gurney and I was so afraid. They're getting ready to put a tube in my chest. I want to stop and say right here, I'm very aware that many of you have faced the very things that I faced. I don't think I'm the only one. I'm just wanting to share my story with you. I understand. But they're getting ready to put this tube in my chest. I'm very... I'm I'm scared. It's one of the times that I was most scared. Leo walks over to me and he said, Honey, you need to be grateful. You need to be grateful that they found out what was wrong. And that was the words I needed to hear. And I was just so afraid. And the doctor walks behind him and says this. He says, Can I pray for you? And this is what I said to him. These are the exact words I said to him because I had been in Psalms 91 that day. He said, can I pray for you? I said, yes, and pray Psalms 91 all over me. That's what I said to him. He prayed the prayer of faith for me laying there in the ER And then he said, I have to go get the tubes and the things that he needed to put in my chest. And he said, here's my phone. And I didn't know, but his wife was a trained opera singer that had just put music to Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place, and he turned it up. (laughs) Every room in the ER would hear it. Every patient in the ER would hear it. It was loud. This doctor was clearly in charge. And he said, and and his wife was singing, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I won't fear the terrors of the night or the arrows that fly in the day. He shall give his angels charge over thee, he says. And every, from the beginning to the end, long life. Long life, I'll reward you and show you my salvation. That's pretty good. No evil shall befall me. No plague shall come near my dwelling. 
We saw God move. There's so many stories. I'll share more tonight at the women's ministry, but so many stories. I hung to this scripture. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And that scripture says, and in this place, I will give peace. I'll come to my grave at a full age. Like a shock of corn comes in as its season. That was the one I told my kids on FaceTime when I told them about the cancer. I said, I've decided I'm coming to my grave at a full age. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou would prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prospers. It's time for me to do some work, you see. If my soul is my mind, will and emotion, is my mind prospering? Is my will prospering? Is my emotion prospering? I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I felt like my mind was prospering. I felt my, like my will was prospering. I didn't know about my emotions. How do I know if my emotions are prospering? One day I get this text from a, a, a lady. It was not a very nice text. It was something she knew from 25 years ago crazy a crazy lady text is what I called it and when I got that text that was clearly meant to hurt me I told Leo you know what it was amusing it was amusing to me I I I showed my mom the text I showed Leo the text and it was just like huh I told Leo, I said it was like a, uh, somebody took a, it was like I was an armored car and somebody took a BB gun to me. Clink. That's how it felt. It was nothing. I knew my emotions had prospered. I'm thinking, lady, I'm thinking, lady, had you got me just a few months before, might have hurt me. But today I got bigger fish to fry than you. I knew my emotions had prospered. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy pledge. My covenant I will not break. Don't you love that? My covenant I will not break nor alter any word. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. And Psalms 27, 13 says this, I'd fainted and I, I, I clung to this. I'd fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the Amplified Version says it this way. It says, what? And it says it again. What would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? I would begin a journey of treatment the oncologist and the, the specialty oncologist, many of you know, the subspecialty oncologist, which I didn't even know there was a thing, the doctors and the, all of them would come up with a treatment plan of chemotherapy and Radiation for six weeks daily, five days a week, chemotherapy, surgery, chemotherapy. And that would be what they were thinking. They said two drugs or a really harsh version could be better, which would have been three drugs. Lose your hair, all of that. 
all of my family sitting in the room. And my son asked this question. He said, with all of this treatment, what chances does mama have of, of this eradicating the tumor? She said, 10%. He said, if she takes the harsher treatment, what chances does the, does the treatment have of eradicating the cancer? And she said, maybe, maybe, this were her words, big grain of salt, maybe 30%. I would end up having four hospital stays. I would be in the hospital 35 days. I would lose 40 pounds that I didn't have to lose. And I've gained 25 back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Over 100 days or more of ER visits, of, of, of therapy, of infusions, of radiation, of doctor's appointments, of CT scans of all of that. And by the way, can we just not give a big shout out to all of our medical personnel? Come on. I am so grateful. Oh, I am so grateful. But I also began a spiritual journey. Am I right with God? Paul, is there anybody you need to forgive? Two people came to my mind. And I thought, why are these people coming to my mind? I, this, these, these things have been over so long. But see, here's the deal. It didn't matter to me if I needed to really forgive them or not. I felt like I already had many, many years ago. But when you're faced with eternity, all of a sudden, it doesn't matter. If I think about you, I'm calling you. And how easy is it to make a phone call when you're faced with eternity? It becomes really easy to do the things that you thought were hard before. Wrote this one lady a letter. Got the sweetest response from her. Knew there was nothing. I told Leo, I think I need to call this person. He knew the situation again t decades ago. He said, Paula, you need to do what you feel like you need to do. I got that person on the phone. And the first thing they said was, I can't believe you called me first. We talked for 45 minutes. They shared with me a real serious situation in their family. And I also learned that day that they were themselves fighting cancer. And I didn't know it. Do I want to be healed? Well, of course I want to be healed. I sure don't want to die. Well, Paula, that really wasn't the question. Do you want to die? The question was, do you want to be healed? You see, I didn't know there was a difference, but I kind of found out there was. It is true that most days... I suffered, but there were some days in between that I could get up and do things that would be normal for me, but I didn't. I need some new nightgowns. 
By five o'clock, I had five new nightgowns on my bed. Oh, I'm sorry, sis. I need the kind that button up. Well, by the next day, I had five new nightgowns on my bed that buttoned up. I want a milkshake. <laughs> 20 minutes later, there's a milkshake that just magically appears on my nightstand. I want new living room furniture. No, I think it's <laughs> Do you want to be healed? Is God looking down at someone who wants to be healed? Or is God looking down at someone who just does not want to die? Is it God's will to heal? Well, all I can tell you is I had the very, I, I struggled with this question. Is it God's will to heal? And after searching the scripture and knowing what Jesus the very reason Jesus came was to heal. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That was surely spiritual healing. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. That has to be emotional and mental healing. And with his stripes, we are healed. That's physical healing. Jesus came to heal but we must believe it. Will God heal me? God is no respecter of persons. Do we believe that? During this time, I did a lot of, you know, self-reflection. But I also learned things about my husband. Leo Price wasn't going to leave. Every single doctor's appointment, by my bed every day, every single radiation treatment daily, every single ER visit, hours and hours and hours, and many times he's sitting there just freezing. He wouldn't leave. Did I think he would? I never thought he would, but I'd never thought about it too much. But now I know. You see, it had never been really tested, right, in this way. Secrets. We kept secrets. I remember one time that Leo, I was in, I was feeling decent enough to be in the office and I was in the office and I was scurrying around and Leo's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm like, um, I just gave him some sort of vanilla answer, you know, because um, I didn't want him to know what I was doing. But I was looking for all of our important papers. I was looking for the life insurance. I was looking for everything that he would need so that it would all be in one place. I wanted to reach out to my mom, to my sister, to my kids, especially to Leo. My heart wanted to reach out to them and say, what are you facing? What are you fighting? Because you know they're fighting too. But I couldn't ask. I knew they probably wouldn't tell me anyway. But you see, if they did tell me the truth, I didn't have anything to make it better. So I didn't ask. Later, Leo, and I talked about it, and I said, what was, what was the biggest battle you had? 
And he said, I would go to bed at night and the enemy would tell me, you're burying another wife. You'll be burying your wife. The days were long. They were hard. I wish I could tell you I handled it like Jesus. (laughs) But, uh, well, that wasn't really true. I'm reminded of I'm reminded of a story of a little Johnny in his first grade class working on his art project when his teacher approaches the desk and she says, "Johnny, what are you drawing?" And he said, "I'm drawing a picture of God." And she said, "Well, Johnny, the problem is is no one knows what God looks like." And he said, "Well, they will in a few minutes." I don't know what his picture of God looked like, but it was probably a better rendition of God than what I looked like. I would scream in pain nearly every single day. We won't do it today, but I, was, I would be reminded of a song that I had written just just written a few months before, I've made up my mind. I'm going to worship you no matter what the cost. I've made up my mind. I'm going to love you no matter what the cost. Did I believe that still? I mean, the stakes have gone up now. Is God going to do something? I don't know if I look the part. I don't know if I'm that good. If we're not careful, we have this idea that God hates me, therefore he won't heal me. Because we view him as being transactional. God is not transactional. The sovereignty of God cannot be reduced to being a transaction. I got mad days. One day I said, God, have I not touched the hem of your garment by now? Because I don't know how to if I have. As soon as the words came out of my mouth, I was repenting. I was convicted because I remember thinking, Paula, you're very closely teetering on the edge of accusing God of something. God is not transactional. You're not going to do enough. to pay for anything God is going to do for you. I remember my sister buying me a T-shirt. She would always pop in and pretty much lived with, with us that time. And she would be always encouraging to me. And she would say, you know, tell me just how strong I was. And, and she got me this T-shirt, you know, that says you're a warrior How strong, and in my mind, I'm thinking, I didn't tell her this at the time. In my mind, I'm thinking, I'm not going through this because I'm strong. I'm going through this because I'm trapped. I'm trapped, and I have no other option. That's why I'm going through it. I told the Lord, God, I know that I'm supposed to know that you're good. But if you could just forgive me today for not seeing your goodness, 
I'm not seeing the victory. All I'm seeing is pain. I want Connie to share just one moment. Back in 2009, we were living in Virginia, working at a church there, and I got a phone call from my sister living in Akron, Ohio. She'd been sick for several days. She had gone to a convention and was hurting so bad in her side, and they went to the hospital, and they said, it's your appendix, so they removed her appendix. She went home, still battling a lot of pain, went to the ER. They said, well, maybe it's your gallbladder. We'll have you see your doctor, and we'll know in a couple of days. And she went home, and the pain just got worse, and her husband took her back and said, we're not leaving till you figure out what's going on. She's 46 years old, and the doctor came in and said, have you ever had a colonoscopy? And she said, no. They did that, and she found out she had stage 4 colon cancer. And the doctor told us she would probably have 22 months with the treatment. And, of course, you know, we said, okay, you know, whatever. But we didn't believe that. We moved during that time to Baltimore to work with college kids and travel around and do ministry. And every place we would go, God opened the door for, for me to share. And I would talk about my sister. I would tell people about Kathy and how... She would stand behind pulpits and she would speak and she would preach and that I, I just know, I said, God's going to heal her. This is a, an opportunity for testimony that God is giving her that she's going to travel and she's going to tell how God has healed her. And the first year went so good. She didn't lose her hair. She stayed strong. But then she had to change the chemotherapy regimen because it wasn't working anymore. And that Christmas... She started buying all kinds of gifts and doing all kinds of things for her grandkids. She finally got to be a Mimi, which is what she always wanted. She knew March the 1st, a few days shy of her being 48, 22 months, she went home to be with the Lord. I was, I was mad. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, there's, there's no way to sugarcoat it. I was mad. All my life, all my life, we had been in church. My dad had pastored since I was born. We had stood in for people. We had prayed. We knew God was Jehovah Rapha. And yet, my sister was gone. And I would stay in bed some days that I didn't want to get out of bed. And I got to the point where I just, I just wasn't happy anymore. And a pastor came to speak at the church that we were at at that time. And he had lost his brother to a drunk driver years before. And he stood there and he told me, he said, God's going to get you through this, I promise. And he prayed for me. And I was thankful. And we went into that service and he preached about the three Hebrew boys. And how they told him to bow. And he said, we will not bow, our God will save us. But even if he doesn't, he still won't. Those words changed my life because I realized that God, even if you didn't do it my way, she's healed. She's completely whole. And she's walking the streets of glory with my dad, with my mom. She was always the favorite, so they're so happy now. I know that. But it wasn't the way I wanted it. But that's okay. That's okay. Because I know that he answered my prayers. That's what I asked for. And that's what he did. And I'm thankful for that. When I can't feel the victory When I don't understand the pain You're still good And I'll praise you You're still good Yes, you are And I'll praise you Like I just walked out of the furnace Like I spent all night long in 
the lion's den Like I just saw the Red Sea split open That's how I'll praise you That's how I'll praise you remember questioning God why am I writing this song I don't claim to know the future but I know sun goes down when I wake up want to see your goodness again in the morning in the evening every night when the sun goes down when I wake up gonna see your goodness again in the morning in the evening every night when the sun goes down when I wake up, I'm going to see your goodness again. I'll praise you in the morning, in the evening, every night when the sun goes down. When I wake up, I'm going to see your goodness again. Oh, yes. And I'll praise you like I just walked out of the furnace like I spent all night long in the lion's den I'll praise you like I just like saw, I saw the Red Sea split open oh, yes. that's how I'll praise you that's how I'll praise you oh, like I just walked out of the furnace you know but I was struggling and convicted and challenged but you see it's just like God that when you give him your worst he still comes back with his best that's what your God does that's what the love of God does I was struggling many times I couldn't walk I got up one night and passed out and my head hit the door frame and I ended up on the tile floor before my family could get to me I was struggling I would go to the piano and my family thought she wants to worship Truth is, I didn't want to worship. You see, I just didn't want to go to the emergency room. And I would go to the piano because I knew that if I played the piano, it would hold 
It would hold my body up. But then you know what would happen is we would worship. It doesn't matter how you get there. We would worship. And that sickness would, every single time, that sickness would leave. I remember once I was laying, sitting on the couch. The thought was so strong. I wanted to rest so badly. I wanted to close my eyes. I had this overwhelming, one of the times, there's only about three, but one of the times that I was most afraid. If you close your eyes, if you lay down, you won't get up. If you close your eyes, you won't get up. When I thought about that, I was reminded of this song. I almost I almost laid down but I didn't I almost gave up and all I could see was my failures Satan whispered you've been through enough of control the world took its toll oh I almost gave up but my God said no I remember standing in my office and I thought do I really want to write this lyric right here this was the one I almost laid down I felt the hope slipping through my fingers Satan whispered throw in the towel You see I was out of control The world took its toll I almost laid down, but my God said no. God said no. God said no. Don't you do it. God said no. No, no. Don't you know I'll bring you through it. No, no, no need. Just to lay there in your pits This is what he said to me, Chris My blood will handle it My blood is gonna handle it I almost lay down I felt the hope slipping through my fingers Satan whispered, throw in the towel. You see, I was out of control. The world took its toll. I almost laid down, but my God said no. God said no. God said no. God said no. Don't you do it? God said no. No, 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 no. Don't you know I'll bring you through it? No, no, no need just to lay there in your pit. Oh, my God. 
the pit that you're in My God said no song is almost almost hey some of you are living in the almost right now but you've not laid down yet you've not given up yet you see you still might be in the waiting room I almost laid down Gave up. Oh, it's getting late. I'm struggling. I almost laid down, but God said no. He said no. He said no. Don't do it, Father. Two weeks, two weeks before my scheduled surgery, I found out the cancer had spread. I've been trusting you, God, for a long time now. I've been trying. My sister, Leo, and I were in the room when he told me. And I just looked at my sister and I said, don't tell mom. Just don't tell mom. But see, I'm going to do one more song. If I believed by this time, and I couldn't deny it after all these months that the songs were written for me and other songs that you didn't hear today. I, I knew it. And if I knew it, then I knew the last song right. that I wrote had to be for me too. It had to be for me too. Hit that, you got it. We're wrapping it up. I see a small cloud. You see an abundance of rain. I see a small See an abundance of rain. I see a shepherd boy, but you see a giant coming down. I see a crimson thread, but you see salvation 
fall, yes you do. I see a storm, builders rejected. Oh, but you, you see Jesus. Oh, I may not see it, I may not feel it, I may not know the plan, but I know you got it. I may not see it, I may not feel it, I may not know the plan, but I know you got it. I see an atmosphere raging, but you see the calming of the storm. Oh, and I see three men in a furnace, but you already see number four. And I see a dead man now buried, but you see an empty tomb. Oh, yes, you do. And I see a world needing a heal. Oh, but you, you see Jesus. Oh, I may not see it. I may not feel it. I may not know the plan, but I know you got it. I may not see it. I may not feel it. I may not know the plan, but I know, I know you got it. See it. I may not feel it. I may not know the plan, but I know, I know you got it. I may not see it. I may not feel it. I may not know the plan, but I know, I know you got it. When I can't carry it all, I need a mountain to fall. I gotta have a miracle and I know you got it when I can't carry it all I need a mountain to fall gotta have a miracle and I know I know you got it when I can't carry it all I need a mountain to fall gotta have a miracle and I know you got one with my name on it when I can't carry it all, I need a mountain to fall. Gotta have a miracle, and I know, I know you got it. I may not see it, I may not feel it, I may not know the plan, but I know, I know you got it. I may not see it, I may not feel it. I know you got it. I may not see it. I may not feel it. I may not know the plan, but I know you got one with my name on it. I may not see it. I may not feel it. I may not know the plan, but I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. before my surgery now and I'm still screaming in pain I go in for my surgery a very invasive surgery and when the doctor comes to my room he says no cancer He did not say, I got all the tumor. He did not say, I cut it all out. I have the pathology.
oncology on my desk at home because my oncologist said to me, Leo was there, I wanted to shout when I saw it, Paula. That's what she said. There was nothing there. So what do doctors do? They take 18 lymph nodes and they're all negative. Now you can decide if it's a miracle. Somebody say, Jesus. 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 Stand all over the building. Jesus. I remember one time when I was struggling, struggling, struggling in the bed. And I just let my feelings get the best of me. And I was having a good old pity party. My husband walks in the room and he said, honey, what's wrong? And I'm telling him everything that's wrong. And he smiles at me and he says, honey, you've just forgotten temporarily who your Jesus is. But I know what's inside of you. He said, just temporarily, you've forgotten. He said, but let me tell you, the storm that is raging around you has not forgotten who Jesus is. You may be thinking you're doing everything wrong today. And you might be but your God is bigger than that you are not too good to need a miracle and you are not too bad to get a miracle that is what I believe. And that's because of the sovereignty of God. And sovereignty says, I can do anything that I want to do, any time that I want to do it. The sovereignty of God is not subject to law. The sovereignty of God is the source and the author of law. God can do what he wants. Jesus. The great physician is in this house and he's here right now. I don't know what you have need of. I don't know unless God would reveal something to any of us what you're going through. Jesus. But you know somebody that's going through something. And let me tell you right now, the storm that you're going through and that your family's going through, the storm knows who Jesus is. Yes. Yes. And the storm knows that when Jesus speaks, it's going to have to cease. It's going to have to stop. I don't know what you need this morning. Uh, and, and it really doesn't matter that I know. It just matters that Jesus knows. But if you're here right now in this room and you need prayer, you need God to touch you, I want you to get out of your seat and get up here as quickly as you can. I want Paula to come. I want her to lay hands on you. I want her to pray for you. I want her to minister to you because God's in the house. The great physician is in the house. I want to say one thing. You know, there were times in, the, in, in my home and I would be in a bedroom where, where no one else was. And you know, I could cry out to God. I could tell on Leo if I wanted to. Just kidding. I could tell him what I wanted. And so I'm asking you, if you've got something private that you need to talk to God about, I want, if it's okay, Pastor Jerry, I want you to come on this side, kind of in the shadows over here. Neil, Neil, no one will come next to you, if that's okay. No one will come by you. If you've got business today, if you've got business that you need to take care of, personally with God and let me tell you every single one of us have had business to take care of at one time or another amen if you've got business and you're kneeling I want you to just pour it out to God
No one will, no one will be around you to, to hear. Sometimes when we get in our homes, it's hard for us to say what we need to say and pray the way we need to pray. This is your moment to do business with God. Go ahead, Lee. There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to heal every pain, break every chain, break every chain. Close your eyes and lift your hands and let's sing it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Stretch your hands out toward these people right now. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. There is power. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Break every chain. 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 In the name of Jesus, there is power. power. In the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, oh, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, get ready. Get ready. The physician's in the house. The physician's in the house right now. In Jesus' name. Break 
had questions for tomorrow There have been times I, I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation 